that type of girl or chick, like just following a man around, right, or staying for a man. That, that's just you not stay for a man, though. For my education. <laughs> <laughs> How do you schedule time? <laughs> Wait, show them, show them. How do you schedule time together? Um... Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to Ray's World. If you've been watching, you know, we, I'm shooting <coughs> a YouTube vlog um, about a personal lifestyle, but we have a special, I guess you're not really a special guest because you've been on the show. What would you call yourself? The husband. The husband. Well, introduce yourself and tell the folks who you are. I'm the husband, uh, I'm <laughs> Tron Muller. <laughs> the husband, uh, ER uh, resident in my last year. Yes, this is my man. So we thought it'd be a <coughs> cute idea to do just some kind of, y'all seen that little 10 on trick TikTok, TikTok and YouTube where the couples give each other the options on the flashcards. So we're gonna do that in the form of questions. <coughs> um, we've been asked to speak a couple of times Right? Like in panels and stuff. Mm -hmm. He speaks all the time. Yeah. Used to. He does. Um, about just kind of our experience. What's your favorite thing about speaking, would you say? Uh, crowd's reaction. The reaction? What yeah, I like to make people laugh. So usually when they, they expect something boring, they kind of yeah. have a short, very brief, entertaining speech. Well, I think he's about two minutes. pretty much the most, one about of the most entertaining minutes. people I've, I've met, which is why he got me. Right. Um, you're confident. What? I was saying you're confident about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're going to just dive right in. What's your drink of choice while we do this? What is uh, it? Banana cognac. A what? You never seen Dave Chappelle <laughs> somewhere about it. That's just the hand coke. So for all y'all who watch Dave Chappelle, um, maybe y'all got that because I didn't. I'm a little bit late. All right, let's get into it. We're going <laughs> to, we don't know who's going to answer what question. So I'm going to hold up two options. And then he's going to pick one option and answer the question, and then we'll go back and forth. Do I get to see the question? No. Well, you, yeah. Once you pick the pick oh, the oh, card, yeah, yeah. oh, by the pick the card. Yeah, but you won't know what the question is before. <coughs> you. Oh. Okay. Well, you can you put your phone on? Um, do not disturb the song. So oh, we can give our full attention to our blog. I gotta check my trap, my Airbnb trap. I ain't know how to book. Okay. All right, we back at it. All right, uh, go to the top. Read the question to the blog. Describe the first interactions. Um, our first interaction? Yes. Um, I was trying to get your number us and your friend was hating. What does that mean? Because every time I was trying to talk to you, they'll come a hold around you at the gym, which they end up being some of my best friends as well. So I do love <clears> them. <throat> so anyway, I seen her at the gym. I was like, yeah, okay, all right. We got a little chunk back there. So, <laughs> so I was like, you know, I was going to try to holler at her. And then literally every time I went over there, your friends like followed you around. Which I think is well, like sweet and that's protective. What I, it's like protective. back in the day. But then there was our, then I mean our bridesmaids. And I, I love That is guys. true. So but, I don't know if you ever gone to the gym with <clears throat> your girls, right? Yeah. So obviously we'd be working out together. He literally came up to the group multiple times and was asking questions that we were like, you should know the answer to. It's, it's how you break the ice. No, it, it's, it works. It's a group of people. But um, we actually met at the school gym. So not just like LA Fitness or like Crunch right. or whatever. But um, yeah. He's an yeah, he, he met me. He met yeah. me. Um, what was the first thing I said? Do you remember that? Oh, I was a first year. No, that wasn't the first thing I said to you. What was the first thing you ever said oh, to you me? Oh, you said so much of hell. I can't, I can't remember. You don't remember. Anyways, okay. the first thing, he was, uh, remember I was walking. Oh, I said something about, you said, oh, well, maybe you run a little bit faster. Yeah, he, he was up there. I just me, He was up there trying to follow me around on the track because I was walking. I had just got my hair, um, what, what do you call it? You I was trying to catch up with you. Yes. And I was and like, what is this dude lurking? Like, then he finally stopped, stopped me and was like, um, oh, you're walking fast. I'm like. You said something about you trying to keep your hair. Yeah, I was trying, trying to get some cardio in without messing up my press. And I was like, well, you're just running slow. So, yeah. but the rest is history. It was all good. It worked. All right, give me, give me um two. Okay, I'm gonna go with the bottom. 
All right. That's a good question. Best times to have children in training. Okay. I'll show you the card. In residency training or med school training? In general, like med school, undergrad. I'll cover the whole thing. Okay. We had our little boy, um, my um, halfway into my third year of residency, and you were. My intern here. I was an intern. His, he was an intern. Okay. So for those who don't know, um, I'm an OBGYN attending now, but at the time we were in residency and he is ER, my last year. ER resident. So we had a child then and I would say the best time <laughs> get pregnant no. when you're about to graduate. No um it was crazy. I mean I think no there, there really isn't a best time. I remember there were some people in my med school class that had children. And I want to just throw this out here. I'm not trying to be sexist or whatever. Uh, but women, sometimes we do inherently incur most of the, a lot yeah. of the burden, yeah. of course, because yes. we have to be pregnant for nine and a half months. Like, easy 75% of the burden. So it's not even just having the child. It's like pregnancy that people don't <clears> think about. And being a resident on very tough rotations, being in the OR all, all day, all night, um, depending on what rotation you are on, was very taxing on me physically um, to do that in pregnancy. Like, I worked a 24-hour shift uh, <coughs> literally um, two and a half days before my son was born, right? Like, I was operating. Whereas you see other women, you know, who come into my practice are coming for visits. They're nesting and baby right. mooning at that time. I, I didn't have that option. So I could imagine how maybe pregnancy would be right. a little bit better in med school. Because it, I mean, in my mind, at least you're at home studying. You're not like, well, yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess med school now because a lot of med school now they allow you just to watch <clears throat> recordings at home. Yeah, yeah. But I guess my issue is just like the um, the study time because the baby is on a schedule. Where they're gonna sleep two or three hours. Yeah. Wake up hollering. Sleep two or three hours. Wake up hollering. And you know, from our standpoint, we like to try to knock out studying and try to be done. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I think maybe I would say whatever gets you to have a child in the least amount of time in residency. That just was a bit much. So if you're gonna have them in med school, fine. But um, just know residency is very stressful. Um, and I think also is we're biased, right? So I'm an OBGYN, he's ER. So there are many times when we're out of the house in the middle of the night so whatever you do i guess to end this i would just definitely have help um my mom actually she we lived in augusta at the time both mm -hmm. of us she drove down every single week two from atlanta minutes. two and a half week two and a half hours to live in our house <clears throat> to help help us with our baby because there were times where we realized oh shoot we don't have a babysitter we don't have a babysitter because <clears throat> i was an intern so my schedule was like schedule was schedule crazy. so yeah, yeah best time is when you have help yeah, absolutely. That, that's, I guess, what I would say. Best time is when you have help. Uh, I can see how, though, it is probably good to have one before you graduate. Just because with women, I remember you going through your job and people asking you. Even though uh, I, I thought they weren't supposed to ask you. It's like, oh, when you plan to have another baby? Yeah. Or, you know, or you, do you plan to be pregnant? Because they don't want to, it seems like they don't want to hire somebody that's going to go on maternity leave within the first year. Yeah, yeah. I think overall, <coughs> I had a decent experience, especially OBGYN. Like, people know you're gonna get pregnant but um you know that is something to think about too i i sub, was self-aware of that no, no one personally victimized me because of that but um but yeah and you do supposed to get paternity leave by the way i think at our institution it's only a week but you should need to ask <laughs> yeah he got a week <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I took 10 of my 12 weeks so just putting that out there um but before it was only six weeks so thankfully right. we got some time yeah. all right let's let's move on so, yeah, and then okay. I need the bottom. Bottom. How do you schedule time? <laughs> Wait, show them, show them. How do you schedule time together? Um, you try your best to schedule in advance. Um, I think that's I think that's the biggest deal. Um, even though that can still be hard because. The schedule still kind of changed. So, again, so I'm a chief this year. So, certain times people may call out. I may be calling call to come in to help. I have, like, extra duties, et cetera. Um, but you have to be purposeful about it. I think that's the big deal. It's hard to do it on a whim. 
How would you, how would you start resetting? Sometimes we do it on the way home. Sometimes we do it on the way home. So, like, so today, um, just happened to be on the way home because my mother called me last night saying, hey, you know, I want to take TJ to Boomerang. So boomerang now, is a boomerang is a, a kids it's like a kids entertainment oh, place. Yeah. So oh, so now all of a sudden we have a Sunday to kind of do things. So, Shoot this video, right? I mean, <laughs> other than that, when you say you schedule time together one on one with us two without the baby, again, that's based off of if a grandparent is planning to come and like pick them up and take them. Other than that, he's with us, but you have to be purposeful about it. like you have to be intentional. I will also say it. something about our relationship. And we developed this pretty early on. And other couples who are in medicine may have like noticed this too. Now, don't get me wrong. He knows I'll flip out if I can't figure out where he is. But. Yes. Like, <laughs> day when I was asleep after work. But, okay. Oh, this, that's for another episode. But for the most part, like, <clears throat> we are very needy. Like, he lives two and some hours away. And I feel like I don't necessarily need to have a two hour long conversation with him every day right or i know he's at work and i had to get understand that he's not going to be able to pick up the phone mm -hmm. right like even when we were in med school studying same thing yeah. or on rotations um or in residency so you kind of become like self-sufficient and then though i feel like the moments we do have together are kind of even more special because you have to make the most of them you, you just make the most of them so <laughs> it's been, it's been a blessing and a curse because yeah. i feel like we Definitely maximize on like the glimpses of time we have together. Right. Because so with the child, it's going to be few and far between and it's just y'all too. So I think the biggest thing is, is learning how to take your child out with you. Oh, I know, yeah. I know TJ has people, been to some time. Yes. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like taking their kid out. Either they, they're scared they're going to cry or whine and they don't want them to. You have to teach your child discipline early. You know, I say this one, not like spanking this one, but like get him used to being out with you because if not, you be handcuffed. You're not gonna be able to go out and do things if you don't get him used to. Yes, the first couple of times suck, right? But then you learn like, oh, well, maybe if I bring some books for him, maybe you know we bring his food out earlier. Yeah. Maybe you know, you, oftentimes you just can't sit him in a corner and expect them to just yeah, not our time. Right, right. Just kind of do their own thing. Like you have to engage them or have them something to engage. Or like most babies, they might just lick at other tables and have people way better than telling them they keep et cetera, et cetera. But, I think the biggest thing is you have to take your child out and a one get used to your child being out with you, get used to how that's going to be different. Bring the child out as well, but also he starts to be trained and he starts to get used to kind of going out as well. Yeah, I think this because it's unrealistic in my opinion just to think that you can just pawn your child off every weekend or every day. Not every day, that's exaggerating. For you guys to go out, you have to learn to take your child out with you, and I yeah. think it benefits you and a child. Okay, am I next? Yeah. Let me do the top. I'm gonna go every other. Have Ooh, I have nice. I experienced discrimination? Spicy. I've been asked this question before, and I'm gonna be honest. Personally, I can't think of like a point blank time that I have been like, oh my goodness, it was because I was black, and that is a blessing. Like. People at the same institutions that I've trained at, you know, may have had different experiences, but I more or less have gone through unscathed and I've been in a lot of um, settings where I was not like in a minority dominant situation. Like I, I went to PWIs, my high school was been, PWI? um, uh, predominantly white institutions. Oh, I'm not sure. He went to play the state, turn up. Is that, a, that's not an HBC. <laughs> But anyways, um, yeah, I went, I went to Vanderbilt and um, then I went to the Medical College of Georgia. Love it. It was great for minorities, I think. Oh, absolutely. It was phenomenal. Um, so if cool. anybody goes there, um, shout out to y'all. Class of 2018. Oh, 2020. 2020. COVID. COVID class. <laughs> they didn't have a graduation. It was it horrible. Um, but yeah, I thought that at least our experience or my experience, I can't speak for you. I really did not experience that um, within the walls of MCG. I know there are other institutions, but even in residency, I, I heard of it. Definitely saw colleagues may have gone through it, but me personally not. And I'm, I'm blessed for that. But by no means am I naive to think that it doesn't exist. Like, I ain't crazy. So, um, but yeah, me answering for myself, no. You never been so, I don't want a black dog? <clears throat> Mm -mm. Happened to me twice. 
No, I know. I mean, I know it happens all the time. So I mean, I'm sensitive so to yeah, it. So it's not like a far-fetched thing. But it, oh, yeah. it happened yeah. a couple of times. And it's interesting because the, I think one time I was a... I think one time I was a medical student. I don't think it happened as a resident. And I remember both times the attendance was peed off. Yeah. Because they didn't have to see the patient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I was about to say. I think they had to do the note. And like, ah. <laughs> I, 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 I think more times than not, I have been told that I prefer a female doctor. Yeah, I can see that. I, I've been told that more, but not necessarily in the ER when I was on my OE rotation. Yeah, yeah. In the OE clinic, literally every other patient. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, your turn. Top. <clears throat> um, read it for the room. Crazy part about matching in a relationship. For those who don't know, matching we mean like matching residencies. It's kind of like the NFL draft or NBA draft. So being in a relationship and having to match. What's the craziest part? I won't say crazy. I would say stressful because you want to be in the same city. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, it's the person that you with. Um, so a lot of people do couples match. Um, I think it actually benefited that she was above me, so we didn't have a couples match. So we, so I could just follow. You. Yeah. So you know, if you know, I was an MCG, and obviously we both from Georgia, both our family from Atlanta, and so you know, his thing. Um, as long as it's a reputable program, most people pick the city they want to live in, like for match. That's just that's just kind of, and let it's something specific. Um, obviously, you should like the program. Obviously, you should like the people. You should do that first. Um, so you should like the program, you should like the people, and you should be confident in them that they would train you the way you want to be trained, right? And so we both felt they were about MCG, but MCG was also a location in Georgia that we both was in at the same time. So some people have the couples match, and then hopefully they open up an envelope and they're in the same time. I mean, they're, they're in the same, uh, they're in the same place. But with us, you know, you got to match somewhere first, and I can just follow you. I was a year ahead of him in med school. That's just so, how it works. So I technically match first. So I think, I think also, that worked better. It, it trying to match helpful. at the same time because yeah. let's just cause let's just say for instance you you know God forbid match somewhere else. Okay, I feel like okay, well you know what you know let me try to match in that city or somewhere in the area versus you end up matching in Houston and then I end up matching in you yeah. know South Carolina and then all of a sudden you're like forever in a day away. Y'all, I was so stressed out because. But you knew else on Listen, it wasn't even that. They said they was going to rank you. So I, I, I didn't fear that I was going to match where I matched. Um, but it was more so, I need this man to propose. Because, I'll be um, honest. <laughs> so we were dating at the time. And I'm, I'm not that type of girl mm -hmm. or chick. Like just following a man around. right, Or staying for a man. That, that's just you not for a man though. For my education. <laughs> <laughs> you stayed for a man. <laughs> you ain't had no ring and you stayed for a man. So that really was stressing me. at first? MCG. <laughs> <laughs> so that really was stressing me out because I didn't have a ring. And my mom was, she was being petty at the time. Oh, how you know he gonna propose? She already asked for my hand in marriage, I think, right? Yeah, I, I literally yeah. asked her. You, you had her hand in marriage. I asked your mom and your grandma and went through the whole third degree with everybody crying and shit on the couch. And then she told me. <laughs> so my mom the whole time was like, well, how do you know he's going to propose to you? And how do you know? Just like egging it. She kept it, a G for me. I appreciate and it. And egging it on. So I, I knew, I thought I would match. But I was like, what if this man, what if we don't work? What if it, oh my God. So a lot of a lot of stuff we saw in med school was like couples were together in the same year and per, got engaged before mm -hmm. match. So it was a little bit more surety where he wound up proposing the next month, but the, for them four weeks, I was like, baby. Proposing is on a man's time. Anyways, I said, honey, it's the, the, signed, I'm staying here, it needs to work out. So, but it did. I got my man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he was a man of his word. Right. Okay. Man's time. Right. All right. Is it me next? No, it's me. You just. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's me next. Cause you said craziest part of my matching. Oh yeah, so you flip the coin, baby. You're on the wrong side. Am oh. I, I'm on the right side. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tripping. Okay. The um, Hennessy kicking in. <laughs> Top of all. I forgot what I did last, but I like this. Looks a little wordy. Let's see. What? <clears throat> okay. What are the negatives to being married to another doctor? Time. 
Time, time, time. I may have done that fast. What are the negatives? Um, we are always on the go. And I just, even just having this weekend together, it was so nice. And sometimes I'll say to him, like, is this what it feels like to not have a crazy schedule? To just um, go to the grocery store together or, like, bum around on the couch? Like, yeah. I think I think <laughs> that's it. And then also... You said, what's the negative stuff? Yeah, like not having a time. What I had to realize, especially as a wife, and this might be kind of not gender neutral, whatever, <coughs> but men, I feel like, really need to feel um, valued and respected. And I hope you feel that I do that for you. I'm just joking, of course. But sometimes it is a little diff more difficult for me because he'll come home and he's like, Oh my goodness, I'm very sleepy. I just work, you know, a 12 hour. Now, trust me, now he's working 24 hour shifts or whatever. But, Shh, <laughs> but, but he'll come home and be complaining about a 12 hour shift. And I will have just worked 24 hour shift plus gone post call. And I'm like, dude, great, you know, but I have to reel it in because I'm like, no, that's still hard, you know. So that's, I think, one of the negatives sometimes with both of us being in, in medicine because it desensitizes you to what the other person is actually going through. Like, I might mm -hmm. come home and tell you about, you know, a high UFD or a, a patient that didn't do well, and that might be really troubling to me because as OBs, we don't see that very often. But for him, that's, yeah, that's, that's his every day. So he that's might kind of shrug it off more than somebody who's not medical you know so i really have to take a step back and realize my role as like being another colleague to him versus being his wife and being his best friend or being supportive um and so i think that's one of the negatives is that it desensitizes you to it can desensitize yeah. you to what your partner has gone on in their own Space. It's, it's a gift and a curse because you understand too much. Yes. You're like, oh my gosh, she bled out and we had to give her a couple liters. I'm just like, I literally emptied a cooler on somebody. <laughs> yeah. And they still die. But it is nice. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. Like, I call him all the time like, babe, this is going on. Answer the phone. He does. Yeah. Vice versa. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All the time I have a, I have a, a quick OB consult when I'm on life. But yeah, I think that the negative is just you both tired all the time. Yes. Re regardless of, you know, um, what shift you work and kind of what you've been through, usually... Sometimes you both come home tired. Yeah. So. Okay, let's speed this up. I feel like we said it's gonna be eight minutes, but we're chatty. I told you. It's on. It's my turn. Are you what you got in your cup? Water. Uh, bottom. Favorite thing about your career, you get to see results. <clears throat> right. I mean, right then and there. So. Um, Let's just say somebody has a really bad infection, their blood pressure is low, you get to give them fluids, or whether or not you got some on Lebo or do an line. Like, I get to see results right in there. I'm a handsy person, so like I work on my own cars, I kind of do my own line, I do some of my own remodeling in the house, so I kind of get a kick out of like seeing kind of results right in and there versus <clears throat> oftentimes with primary care, let's just say if someone has diabetes, right, and you're trying to lower down the A1C. You start them on medications, you train them over the next three or four months, so education being it kind of takes a while. Um, I, I kind of like seeing those instant results, whether kind of good or bad, I think is kind of what I enjoy most um, about the job. I think the second thing is when I come home, I'm done. I was going to say, you like that shift, shift work. Um, well, no, no, no. Shift work is overrated. So here, and here so, um, so right, before I get on that, so the second part, I think when I come home, I'm done, right? There's no... Hey, this patient said this, or hey, you know, can you come back? Or you know, can I? No, no, no. Once I'm home, I'm done. Um, I turned, you know, either I, you know, cleaned up my mess for what we, we call it for lack of a better word, or I've turned it over to the next physician. Uh, but other than that, I'm done. So being able to kind of see results right then and there, <clears throat> um, being able to kind of be done when you go home, it's always great. And then there is a compassion component because usually, you know, people do come to you at their lowest. Right, so to have somebody come to you at their absolute lowest, they had to wait, unfortunately, an absurd amount of time in the ED for either a small problem or a big problem. And you get to, you know, at times fix it or kind of give them some kind of clarity on kind of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that's kind of rewarding as well, because at this point, 
with the wait times being upwards of 6, 7, 12, and <laughs> some people 18, 12 hours, if you're coming to the ED now, you need some kind of, it's something that's bothering you. Yeah. Whether it's, regardless if it's life threatening or not, if you're willing to wait for eight hours to be seen, whether it's just an ACD, whatever the case may be, something is bothering you. Yeah. Um, so to kind of give people that clarity is good. Um, shift work sucks. Um, I'll be honest with you. So some people say I'm going to the ER because I like shift work. I'm used to shift work because I was in the military first and then I did law enforcement and I worked corrections and stuff after that. But shift work sucks. Here's why shift work sucks, right? Because you know, sometimes in one week, I will work a day shift, evening shift, and a night shift, right? You have no internal clock, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So oftentimes, you're borderline sleepy, and then oftentimes, most of your shifts are evening shifts or night shifts or shifts on the weekend. So, you know, typically, you're going to have a weekend shift two to three weekends out of the month, and, and obviously, multiple shifts, yeah. where everyone else may be on call every four weeks, every six weeks, every 10 weeks, whatever the case may be. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of you're on the cancer. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think shift work. The thing, the thing that's great about shift work is you get to leave when your shift leaves. But you know, working seven to four Monday through Tuesday, and then eleven to eight Friday Saturday, and then maybe on that Sunday Monday you got to do an evening shift or something. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, absolutely not. <clears throat> okay, I think I'm the last one. Let me do top. Ooh, yeah. What has helped balance medicine, marriage, parenting? <clears throat> um, I think for me, and I, this is not advice. This is me just saying words for me. Grace and patience. So realizing that I cannot be all things at all times and knowing that there are some seasons where my child is watching Miss Rachel for a little bit too long on YouTube for Parents of toddlers, y'all know what that is. Um, or there's some seasons where, you know, I didn't get in that reading on the up on the patients as much as I wanted to. Um, but, you know, I've done a great job as a mom. My child is ahead with stuff. And so it's just me realizing that um, it's a balance. Um, and something sometimes you put stuff down to pick other things up. And that has helped me with my <coughs> psyche. And I think being in this career, we're very type A, even as much as you don't want to be. Like, both of us, I would think in general, are kind of laid back people, which mm -hmm. helps our us being together. But um, to get to this position, you have to be somewhat type A and somewhat like a master of your craft. Um, I try. Or, or try to be. And by no way am I a master of balancing at all. So I'm, I'm figuring it out. And I think a big part of that is me kind of learning from other people, um, and then me kind of making my own path and being okay with that. What would you say? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think being able to wear different hats at different times, I think is like what's more important, right? And then I think what is your expectations out of your partner as well? Mm -hmm. I think plays an even like bigger role, right? So for instance, right, um, <clears throat> both of us, like for me, and we, we talk about this all the time, like, um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't looking for a housewife, cook and clean person. Baby. <clears throat> I was looking for somebody that's going to bring in some money. <laughs> just, just be honest with you. I mean, as, as, as far as preference, because I don't mind cleaning and I don't mind cooking. That's true, mind, because that you know, money, talk, that right, money talk, I right. can pick up a bone. Right, that's what I was about to say. Money. I mean, I ain't kind of doing some of that kind of stuff around the house. Yeah. So I, I, I think partner expectations um, kind of weighs heavy in it because you know you don't well, you don't you don't want to feel like you're not doing something that your partner would either appreciate or feel love like if you did right and i always tell her like i don't you know if, if you have time to cook dinner if i have the time to cook dinner it doesn't just because you didn't cook dinner not one time this week does not change why you gotta say all that <laughs> no no I'm, no I'm saying because even for me right because yeah. i'm obviously we're not here but i'm just saying like in general for some men they're like oh you know i you know i want a woman to like cook for me every night. Like I, 
if you bring this kind of money, I can care less. <laughs> what well, he's basically saying, I, mean, I can absolutely. If you don't care cook, less. you better bring you better. something else to the table. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and vice versa. But I think it's different for different people. Yeah. And so it makes it easier, you know, because especially when you're a physician or even a lot of the nurses or engineers, it's a, it's a lot of people in certain fields that you're working like a dog. And if you're living in a big city, you fight through traffic for like three or four hours to get home. And so whether you're male or female, you're supposed to, you know, get up, go to work, fight through traffic to get to work, you know, work 89 hours on in a job that some people may or may not love. You know, they just kind of do it because they have to do it. Fight through traffic to get home, pick the kids up and deal with them. And somehow supposed to like cook a meal or like clean up the whole that's just that's not realistic in my in my in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I think partner expectations um becomes like a big part of your balance, right? So as long as you got good partner expectations, I think that balance is a lot easier. When I was like, look, <clears throat> you were bringing my money other than that, just take care of yourself. <laughs> like whatever yeah. you want to do, if you want to get up if you just want to come home and go shopping. And you, you do whatever you need to recuperate and kind of be a happy person. Um, I, I think that, again, part of expectation, I think, plays a huge role. And I think in your personal life, life, life balance. And then um, I think kind of knowing how that other person relaxes. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> oftentimes, my relaxation is going to the gym. If they're going to the gym, like watching a car, right? Your relaxation might be relaxation <laughs> you know what I mean and so it's different so you need to allow that person like to have that so yeah. again I'm not finna come home like oh you know, I just like no that's just, just not you know maybe years ago but that's, that's not expectations anymore and I don't, I don't think it should be well we have reached the end of our questions in the end of my class in the end of his class but I just want to say thank you for being my ride and guy and thank doing you. this this um, vlog with me Hopefully, you guys have found something interesting from what we said. Um, mm-hmm. We'll do another part. So, if y'all have any other questions about anything that relates to medicine, marriage, what else we talk about? Um, kids. Kids. Being kids. young and married. Whatever. We, didn't, we didn't get the financials. In the yeah, we didn't get the financials. But that's, I think that's a big, <clears throat> big part of it. Um, drop it down in the comments, and we'll do another little... Um, vlog, podcast, whatever you call this type of thing, um, to talk about some more topics. But we hope y'all have a blessed week. And whatever you're going after, you can do it. We believe in you. Yep. Wouldn't it be crazy if this didn't record? If it didn't record, we just fucked up.